Welcome back. I am Rain and I am joined by Ithaca Hawk and we're going to be commentating Ghost Legion versus the Bastard Cartel. So Ghost Legion brought their flagship Balgorn sitting at 20 from the center with an Oneros, double Stratios, double Myrmidon, double Vengeance, and double Vexor. So we're going to be seeing lots and lots of drone spam. Ithaca, would you introduce Bastard Cartel? Yeah, sure. So the Bastard Cartel uh, also bringing a flag Balgorn along with a quad battlecruiser core here. To, uh, one fleet hurricane, two navy harbingers, one navy brutics, and they're uh, bringing that, supporting that with double arbitrator, double deacon purifier. So going for the uh, the logistics frigates that we've seen being used a couple of times so far this tournament, uh, coupling that with the flag balgorns. A bit of an interesting variation of what we've seen with the battle cruiser core here, choosing not to bring that tech to a logistics cruiser. Yeah, and Bastard Cartel actually warping in at range with that flag Balgorn, and they may opt to use it defensively, maybe preventing the Ghost Legion Balgorn from coming in. So we'll probably see a sort of battle for control, if if you notice those control bars are actually pretty large. Yeah, it does look like the Ghost Legion control bar is slightly higher, so that's potential that it could be a full nuke Balgorn versus a gun Balgorn on the Bastard Cartel side, but that's something that remains to be seen, of course, when the match gets underway. I mean, it's interesting that um, the Ghost Legion team here are bringing dual Stratios uh, instead of, for example, maybe some Vex and Navies, because that is not banned. Yeah, the Stratios, I believe, they would be able to use the higher, I would say, maybe the highs or the, the um, holy cow, the mids, um, maybe a little more than the VNIs. I believe the VNIs don't, don't get that many flights of drones, whereas the Stratios have very large drone bays. We do have the match kicking off. We saw Lynx go, but nobody really moving. And from Ghost Legion being a drone-based comp, we also don't see them sitting out any drones. It seems like it's kind of a sort of Mexican standoff, I think is what it's called, when these teams are just kind of waiting for the other to move. Yeah, I think uh, both teams are afraid of getting uh, their drones smart-bombed off because, uh, as we talked about uh, on the desk a little while earlier on, Balgorns with those utility highs can fit a couple of smart-bombs, so very good for clearing off swarms of drones that are coming in to harass your smaller ships. Now, the Ghost Legion um, Balgorn has taken a chunk of damage, but now that's been swapped onto the Vexor of Adorable Rage, who is just taking a bit of shield damage, but so far, pr perfectly comfortable. No, uh, no damage being applied to the Basque Cartel just yet, uh, although one of those Deacons now being painted. Yeah, so getting rid of at least one deacon will allow the other deacon to be almost essentially worthless. And these deacons actually have to stay pretty close to their team because they're re using smaller reps. They will have to, they will have to be within closer range compared to that Oneros of Ghost Legion, which can kind of keep its distance a little more while safely applying full reps. Yeah, so looking in at the uh, the Balgorn of uh, VTA on um, the Ghost Legion side, it does seem that he has a full newt Balgorn here. There's no guns fit to his ship, so he will be just applying all of those newts to uh, those two Harbinger navies. And of course, they're very cap-heavy uh, guns, so if he shuts them down, that's a huge amount of damage removed from the Baskatel side. Now, the Baskatel is choosing still to focus on this Vexor, but just not applying very well at all to it. And I'm actually quite concerned for this Deacon on Bastard Cartel's side, so it is actually webbed by, I believe it's the Balgorn, and then it just has a swarm of bots on it, and so it's second Deacon buddy, while being Nos at the same time is going to have to try and keep him alive. And there's that smart bomb like you predicted, the Bastard Cartel Balgorn does have a smart bomb on it, and it's trying to save its poor little Lodgy Frigate. Yeah, so the, the one major enemy of a Deacon uh, is, of course, uh, Neutralizers. Second major enemy being Bonus Webs. So to face a Balgorn sitting almost on top of you with Bonus Webs and some very strong Newts, probably Officer Newts, then that is just not where you want to be. And, of course, once you lose one Deacon, the second one is not long for this world, to use a very common phrase around the Alliance tournament. So I'm sure we'll see him drop very, very quickly. And meanwhile, the Bastard Cartel are struggling to break anything on the Ghost Legion side. It looks like those Newts have been applying to those Harbingers for so long now that they've almost been shut off completely. Completely. Yeah, one thing to note though is that when um, the first Deacon did die, it also, all those damaged drones from Ghost Legion actually died as well. And it looks like they're attempting to salvage those Praetors as they're flying back towards the Ghost Legion end. The Smart Bomb's still being run by the Bastard Cartel Balgorn for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. So at this point, all he's doing is damaging friendly. So there is the Ghost Legion Balgorn nearly sitting right on top of the Bastard Cartel. I'm not sure if they're choosing not to primary it at all, or if they're just sort of not sure what, what target they should be calling. Yeah, I think they're trying to sort of almost protect their Deacon and stay close to it to uh, smart bomb any drones that come for it. Uh, the Deacon is being painted, but he isn't webbed, he isn't neutered, so he can still provide some reps. Obviously, he's going to struggle if he gets primed himself, he doesn't have his Logi Buddy there anymore. It looks like uh, Bastard Cartel do have some rep bots, though. They're dropping them now and putting them onto the Deacon of Predator just now, so he will have a little bit of buffer provided by those uh, those Logi bots, but he's still massively on uh, disadvantage now by losing that first Deacon. Although, saying that, the Aeneas and Ghost Legion's 
side. He's now taking a bit of damage. He's painted, but that is it. There's no newts, there's no webs, so he's fairly free to just burn off at 2.2k. Yeah, it seems like, I'm going to say, maybe these Belgrams are operating independently of the rest of their team. It looks like they were in a caster warfare, just sitting rather close to each other while the rest of their teams are trying to pick off the rest of the wings. One being that Deacon, and then it looked like maybe primarying that Arbitrator, as well as the Bastard Cartel aiming for that Stratos, which now looks to be sitting pretty in shield. Yeah, so that Balgar on the Ghost Legion side is now webbed as well, so the full uh, control war is just being fought between these two Balgarns, and if I had to bet, I would say the fact that the uh, the Ghost Legion Balgarn doesn't have any uh, turrets fit, he's going to have more newts than the uh, Bassa could tell one, and of course he will then win out, although, yeah, he is still using the other Balgarn, but he's only being nosed himself, and that's pretty indicative of the Bassa could tell Balgarn there being running out of cap. Yeah, although as you say that, his, his smart bomb did run out, did run, which means he at least has some cap to a run. It uh, looks like Ghost Legion decided to try and go for that second deacon, and while we can see that swarm of of heavy bots on him, um, the the I want to say the bastard cartel Belgrans actually trying to smart bomb them off and get rid of them. I don't know if they were just sitting there trying to play bait because once you lose those drones, then your ships become pretty worthless. Although saying that, the deacon does go down. Yeah, so second Deacon down there for the Bassa Cartel, a Purifier now going down as well. So this is not a good place for the Bassa Cartel, they don't have any logistics left. The damage has been pretty much shut down by these uh, these uh, high newt Balgorns, uh, which has been turning off the guns of the Navy Harbinger. Both Navy Harbingers now scrammed and webbed, so they're going to get uh, pretty much nuked by the damage coming in from the Ghost Legion side. Yeah, Ghost Legion Vengeances are now freely um, able to go into the Bassa Cartel, um, well, I would say Ball of a battle cruiser course and just sit there and tackle whomever they need. Looks like one's being trek and disrupted. I'm not quite sure like what effect that will be. I figured you'd save your cap for that from the arbitrators. Yeah, unfortunately, if those arbitrators are pretty much set up to uh, counter another battle cruiser core. And it looks like maybe that's what they expected. By banning the Gila Ishtar, they're saying, look, we don't want you to bring drones. Uh, please bring battle cruisers. And they've brought those arbitrators to try and counter that. Ghost Legion have turned around and said, well, an a Stratios and an Ishtar are the same points value, so we can just sub out those two Ishtars with two Stratios, and we can still bring this drone variation, uh, leaving those two Arbitrators basically 12 wasted points if they are fully uh, disruptive fit. Yeah, and it seems like Bastard Cartel actually isn't able to shoot really anyone off of Ghost Legion. We see this Navy Harbinger belonging to Itkovian actually dying, or being the primary for Ghost Legion, and it doesn't look like Bastards actually shooting anyone in retaliation. I think they were trying to win the game of drones, and it turns out it's not really working in their favor. Yeah, it looks like what's happened is uh, Ghost Legion have traded all of their drones for two Deacons and a Purifier. However, they're quite happy with that. They've still got their Aeneros alive, so the Bastard Cartel, although they still have more potential damage, if you look at the size of the attack bars, the Newts are shutting down some of the, the heavier guns, and they just can't break this Aeneros, although that Bargarn is starting to take a little bit of damage. I think he's probably sitting pretty, maybe even being bait-tanked by his friend Killer in the Aeneros. Uh, so it's just, uh, like they've traded all their drones, but they're not concerned. They've got the points to win. They just have to last another 3 minutes and 10 seconds without messing up. Yeah, and Bastard Cartel can't win the War of Attrition. However, if they do manage to break through those Oneros reps and kill this Balgrun, they will be ahead of points. Um, it looks like they're slowly losing that Navy Harbinger, though. It still seems like he's being primaried, and we see flights of drones going in and out and then dying to that Bastard Cartel Balgorn. Yeah, and of course, once that Navy Harbinger does go down, uh, he is still firing, so despite um, the newts going onto the Balgorn, he's got a little bit of cap back, he is being uh, nosed, not muted, so he has regenerated some, so he is firing, but he will go down very shortly, a chunk of the damage will go off the Bastard Cartel side once again. The Vengeance on uh, Ghost Legion is taking a little bit of damage, but Killer in the Oneiros is so far been pretty unpressured, in fact he's regenerating quite a lot of shields, he's back up to about 30% shield, so I mean the Bastard Cartel just not in control of this match, look at the size, the girth of the control bar on the Ghost Legion side there, they have just dominated the Bastard Cartel just purely with control. Yeah, they're doing quite well. Bastard Cartel has lost that Navy Harbinger. There, were, as an attempt to, there was an attempt to have a flight of rep bots on him. However, it looks like that was not enough as he dropped off. The Balgorn is still just passively regening a shield. Um, now it looks like Bastard is trying to primary that on Neros, maybe? Yeah, just there's not enough damage left on both sides, really. I mean, the, the Ghost Legion team, they've lost a lot of their damage. They're just kind of whittling down with, uh, like, you know, death by a thousand cuts, this Navy Harbinger here. But they've lost the vast bulk of their damage. But they're lucky because they've still got their logistics. If both teams were in this position and both teams still had their logistics, we'd probably have 
a stalemate that would go to time. Uh, as it happens, um, Ghost Legion managed to get those deacons down first. I can't help but wonder if maybe Asakatel had something stronger for the logistics ships, maybe in an nearest cell, then this would have gone a little bit different for them. Yeah, and if we do actually go, if, if they did actually go into overtime, it's not considered a draw. Um, it actually would be considered reverse tie-dye, so the match would speed up and players would have to actually act a little quicker on uh, what would be going on. As we know, tie-dye slows things down, reverse tie-dye then would speed things up. Um, one thing to note as well is that these are both flagship Balgorns, so therefore if this Balgorn on the Bastard Cartel side doesn't die, they still get to keep everything and Ghost Legion can't keep it. Although Bastard Cartel will be out of the Alliance tournament, they wouldn't actually lose everything on, that, on their Balgorn. Yeah, so that's got to be the sort of uh, silver spoon there, although they did just kill that Aeneas. Just... Yeah, I don't know what happened, they just got murdered. So it looks like they kind of got in good range, applied that damage. If they can kill this Stratios in the next 35 seconds, this match is still on. We were, we oh, were yeah. writing this off, but this Stratios has now taken a lot of damage. They, those, they can't those, lose that Navy Harbinger, They, can't, they can't lose, lose that Navy Harbinger, he has to survive. If he has to overheat and burn away and just try and get as much damage onto the Stratios, the Stratios is reaching almost into hull. 20 they seconds left, 20 seconds they have easy. to kill it, and he's down, the Stratios is down. The Bastards oh are God, up by two points. 16 back. seconds, they, they have to survive. This Navy Harbinger has to survive another 10 seconds. And if he, he is, does, he Bastard Cartel take this. Reps from the drones are landing, but he is still bleeding hull. Five seconds no, to no, go. No, no, he's regenning, oh. he's regenning shield. Oh my god, he's barely, he is barely staying alive. They have to do this. Oh my god. Holy yes. crap, what oh a match there. God, Bastard what? Cartel pulling that one out of the bag. I don't know how they did that, but that was oh, absolutely man. spectacular. Wow, what a match. Let's just throw this one back to the guys in the booth and let them make something of that one. Oh. and we're coming down here to kick some mother The matches are so good. The matches are so good today. They are insane. Ghost Legion out of the tournament, a team we all expected to get crazy far in, you know, maybe not final weekend, but certainly, you know, first and second, second day, third weekend, out to the Bastard Cartel, who had a let's be honest, terrible game against United Conference, pulling it out of the bag so clutch. Oh my god, are you kidding me? How good the matches are today? Please, so good. <sighs> Reload, like, whilst I just kind of like collapse from the insane nerdgasmic action we have here, just talk us through the story of that match. Okay, so the story of the match was you had the Balgon Quad Navy BCs. They actually brought Deacons, which uh, may have shot them over foot because uh, basically the Balgon had lots of smart bombs, so he was smart bombing all the Stratios' dro drones because it was a drone, uh, it was a drone based comp for the Aeneas. But the thing is, is that as the match went on, the Deacons did die and the support did die. But the thing is, is that uh, Ghost Legion ran out of drones, hmm. and so basically, what happened? The damage was so weak at the end that somehow the Bastard Cartel managed to nuke the Aeneas, and then they were like, "We need to kill something in this these two minutes." And within the 15 seconds, they finally got it, but this Harbinger was in 30% structure, but there was no damage left. So it was just like mm. Warriors and Ar versus Armourette bots. They did die after the timer, but too late. Yeah, we do have the vote winner of that match of Ghost Legion versus Bastard Cartel. That is Levar Burton. Congratulations, you get a billionisk. And I've just been told that we have a ton of graphs queued up there already. We want to get through as many as we can before the day is out. Uh, I'm sure they will be released on Alexi's stats blog, but let's get through which ones we can. Let's have the picks versus bans graph. So this is the overall picks versus bans so far in the tournament. We have the Aneros pick ban rate at 0.7. Very, very popular ship. After that, the Ishtar. 
Brute X Navy issue, Scimitar, very heavily banned, also a very popular choice for Shield Loggy, Logi, even. Blackbird, Harbinger Navy, part of the MBC Core, Vexor, we've seen be popular, Guardian, Eos, Gila, Vexor Navy issue, Vindy, Balgorn, Daredevil, Hyena, down in that nice S shaped graph there. Um, love these stats, man. Having stats for the tournament scene is so much fun to dissect them, you know, in the coming months to really get. Uh, what we can at them because obviously currently all we can do is just kind of big data because there's so much data coming in we can just represent it in kind of very broad terms but i'm certain that with the level of nerd we have in the eve online community let's be honest it it exists um we can do some real hardcore analysis going further into the future which is going to be really interesting to watch and hear from all the different groups analyzing different parts of the data we've collected so um let us now talk a little bit about the next match. Um, that is going to be, as I scroll down here, Phoebe Freeport Republic up against Mercenary Coalition. Now, this is a match with very exciting potential. Phoebe Freeport Republic being a top 16 finishing team, very strong AT team. They have a Balgorn flagship. They filled it once. It is available. We've also seen them field a Rabisu. Yeah. It did not die, so we know, guaranteed, have it available, which means that the Balgorn Rabisu pair, which we've seen be quite popular in clutch situations, that is a potential watch here. Um, we have uh, Mercenary Coalition also having a flag ball. They may or may not have a Rebisu, we don't know. They have fielded their flag ball at least once, so we know they're willing to show it even in the early rounds. So this is another potential very exciting, very expensive match. Looking at their history here, we have Phoebe Freeport Republic losing to the Ghost Legion first round who we just saw winning against its only pixels the clown car uh, mercenary coalition beating the bastard cartel first round who again we just saw uh, going up against the initiative and losing there and then beating solar fleet uh, so tony give me your thoughts on this upcoming match well, i think it's quite interesting is i think a lot of people would uh, pick phoebe republic over the mercenary coalition based on previous at data mm -hmm. but based on the teams that they've lost to and the teams they've eliminated it seems like mercenary coalition might actually be stronger if we're just talking about 80 15 so far uh really what are your thoughts um, i'm gonna go with the opposite i think P vfr are, are, are quite very strong mm. um i definitely think they have the upper hand on this on this matchup honestly sorry suit Okay, well, we do actually have a replay ready of the last few moments of that nail biter of a match, Bastard Cartel versus Lord Legion. You know, as the commentator said, Ghost Legion, they've got this. Sure, they've lost their Logi, but the Bastard Cartel have lost both the Logi Frigs, Purifier, Navy Heart. Massive, massive advantage to Ghost Legion. Sure, they're losing a Stratios, but you know, it can burn away. It's a Stratios. It is webbed and painted, you know, so it's difficult. Uh, he's not moving very quickly at all. He's going down, but then that Navy Harb is very close to dying. The Stratios is down, Bastard Cartel up by two points in the very final seconds of the match. That means that the Navy Harp, if we can look in on that, has to survive in its sliver of structure. It's only going 197k, it is mega neutered by the Val, it has zero uh, cap available, it ca probably can't even shoot its guns, let alone activate its hardeners or anything, but in the final few seconds it just survives. I would love to see you know, just how many hit points of structure that thing had left at the very end of the match. So Bastard Cartel sneak their way through the bracket, eliminating Ghost Legion, as we said, a team we expected to do very well moving forward. But unfortunately, they are out. This tournament, man, the tournament of upsets, if there ever was one. I mean, uh, the last big tournament of upsets, like for this level of upsets, maybe you have to go all the way back to 80, was it 84, where Band of Brothers lost to that Thorax Rush? I mean, that was one huge, gigantic upset. Possibly still the biggest upset in tournament history, given that they'd won three tournaments nearly uncontested thus far. But we've just had so many, even today, and over the last two weekends, are you kidding me? Like, it's insane how many upsets we've had. Still, moving on, this match, we have again Phoebe Freeport Republic going up against Mercenary Coalition. The desk is divided on who's going to win. However, I am going to pick, ooh, I'm going to go with Phoebe Freeport Republic. I believe in them. Yeah, I really want to see that Rabisu. I'd quite like to see it die. But let's find out as we go to the casters for this match. Phoebe Freeport Republic going up against Mercenary Coalition. Welcome to uh, Phoebe Freeport Republic versus Mercer Coalition here in the line.